1909 by George Nimmons. That's the same man who did the Reed Murdoch Center, the asymmetrical brick building that we saw before. This building in its original state was a warehouse for a railroad company. It was then used as a printing facility and now it's used for luxury lofts. In a moment, we will clear this bridge and the brick zigzag building on our right. Uh, as we do, just stay on the right, you'll see two sister buildings in just a moment. These two buildings were done by Lucien Lagrange in 2002, and they are both in the international style. That term, international style, was first coined in 1930, and it was coined in New York City. You see, this was the style of buildings going up in Europe at that time, so when it was time to label the actual style, they said international style, since the buildings in the style were going up overseas. Uh, very quickly, look up and on the right, you'll see that building with the blue windows and the large concrete. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the Montgomery. It was done by Yamasaki in 1974, and it's the former corporate headquarters to Montgomery Ward's catalog house. Uh, corporate headquarters does mean office building, so you might be wondering where is the corner office on the humongous office building. Well, the lack of a corner office on that building is all thanks to Montgomery Ward. When he was alive, he was a firm believer that no one, for any reason whatsoever, would ever deserve to have a corner office, regardless of what he or she did for the company. So the building's architect, Yamasaki, really took the no corner office mantra to heart and made it impossible for anyone working there to achieve one. Since the catalog company closed, the building's now used for condos, and the biggest exterior change since the space conversion would be the removal of bronze windows and the insertion of the blue glass that we saw before. The corners in the building are where the elevators and the bathrooms were housed. All right, so let's hop over to our left. I promise this is the last building on the left that I'll do for a while. On our left hand side, we have the back side of the Freedom Center, done by Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill in 1983. This is the production outlet for the Chicago Tribune, one of the city's oldest newspapers, and we'll see the newspaper's headquarters near the end of the tour. This building holds 10 printing presses, and they are all so heavy, they need their own foundation in addition to the foundation for the building. Okay, let's go to the right. I promise I'll stay on the right for a while. The pale yellow building on our right is One River Place. It's the old, old headquarters to Montgomery Ward. The building's since been converted to condos, but in just a moment, we will clear this bridge. As we do, I'd like everyone on board to look up on the right at about your four o'clock on top of this building, and there you will see a statue of a woman. She is standing on one leg, she has one arm extended, there she is, and she's titled A Century of Progress oh, Through yeah. Commerce. Oh, yeah. She was originally on display at the World's Fair in 1933 and 34, and after the close of the fair, she was placed on top of the building. We'll see her again in just a few minutes. The building just next to us is the Domain, done in 1908. It's the old warehouse for Montgomery Ward's catalog company. This building was done by Schmidt, Garden, and Martin, and when it opened in 1908, it was the largest concrete structure inside the United States. Uh, the building, once again, was done by Schmidt, Garden, and Martin, but a lot of people say it looks a lot like Frank Lloyd Wright. Very long, very low. Um, well, it is very similar to his style, the prairie style, and it's similar for three reasons. The first is the building's long, low, continuous shape. Secondly, we have the strong use of horizontal lines. And last but not least, there is a slight angular bend in the building. If you'd like to see it, right now it's at about our 7 o'clock. Now, angular bends like this aren't commonly seen in Frank Lloyd Wright's work. But this bend lets the building follow the exact natural shape of the river and its north branch. And being built into a building's environment is a signature move of Frank Lloyd Wright and of his style. Well, we're hitting our northernmost point. We once again have that great view of the statue. She's now on our left, and she is titled A Century of Progress Through Commerce. We'll be as close as we can get right before we clear the bridge. And I promised you all some break time. This is for the first of our three breaks. If you'd like to use this time to take some pictures or enjoy your company, go right ahead. If you want to step downstairs to warm up for a few minutes, that's totally fine. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Just come on up and ask, and I will pick back up in a few minutes, and then I'll talk about some history. Get walk around. Don't go swimming. Hey guys, uh, I can't hear me. But it's Iron Assassin here, and I can't really talk until I'm with my family. So yeah. This is Chicago. Take 
ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നത്